I've got an impeller model open in Creo Parametric, so let's take a look at using Creo Simulation Live for applying centrifugal loads, gravity loads, and performing an unconstrained modal analysis. Let's click on the Live Simulation tab, and right now it is loading the libraries. I notice that my model doesn't have a material sign. Let's go to Model Properties, click the Change button, and go to the Grant Library that was added in Creo Parametric 4.0. Let's go to Ferrous Metals, and I'm going to use a medium carbon steel. Right click, choose Assign, and then OK. And we've got our material assigned, which I can see from the little box in the model tree. To perform our structural analysis, we need to define some constraints and loads. Let's start off with a fixed constraint. I'm just going to constrain this inner surface and then click OK. For the centrifugal load, I'll click on the button here. And we're going to define the velocity. I notice that the units here are in radians per second. You can also do degrees per second, and they have revolutions per minute. Let's say that I knew what the value was in revolutions per minute, and I wanted to enter the value in radians per second. One way that I can do that is by using some MathCAD for performing the analysis. Let me minimize and go over to MathCAD. And you can download PTC MathCAD for free for the Express version. So I'm going to say 6,000 revolutions per minute. If I go to the drop down list for angle here, we have the abbreviation for revolution. I'll hit the divide key. And if I don't know what the unit of time for minute is, I could probably guess it's MIN, but just in case, we can go enter in the value from here. Then I'll click the equals button to evaluate it. And this gives me the value per second. And this is radians. And if I just want to confirm, I can delete that one in there and enter in rad, which is the abbreviation for radians. So I'm going to enter in my uh, centrifugal, centrifugal velocity as 628 and some change. Let's minimize out of here, go back to Creo Parametric. And taking a look at the world coordinate system, I want to define the velocity about the y-axis. So let's enter in that value, 628.319, and then click the OK button. And we've got the load applied. Then to perform the analysis, we just click on the simulate button, which we can get to from the ribbon or the quick access toolbar. And it tells us that we are making a continuous simulation, which will update with any changes to the model. And we can see in here that we're getting a value in here of 21 megapascals and some change. As before, we can go to the results options. You could change the set of units that you are using. For example, if I want to use PSI or want to use KSI. And also check the box to show the min and the maximum values so we can see where we are getting the peak stress in the part. So that is good for my structural analysis with the centrifugal loads. If I want to, I could then throw in gravity in here as well. And for gravity, let's say that I want gravity acting in the negative y direction. I can type in negative 1. And for the magnitude, we have a drop down list. And I'm very familiar with meters per second per second. I always remember that that is 9.8. And that'll give me an acceleration due to gravity of 1g. Let's say I wanted to pretend that this was under 10g's acceleration. I could change, or let's change the magnitude to 98.0. That feels better to me than changing the direction. And click the OK button. And the calculation is updating. We can see the indication on the screen for the different loads. And there we have our different results in here, which you can, of course, also animate. Looks pretty cool. 
That is good for our structural analysis that contains our centrifugal velocity and also our gravity. Let's create a second simulation for a modal analysis. And in this particular one, I'm not going to define any constraints. Let's hit the simulate button and it is calculating. And let's take a look over here as we are getting the first mode calculated. And it looks like we found the mode at being around 1481 hertz. If we go to the result options, and one of the big things that we're interested in is the mode shape. I always like animating, it looks pretty cool. Let's crank up the scale a little bit just to increase the factor. And go back to the options tab and change the mode. We can say, okay, that's what the first mode looks like. Yep, second mode looks similar, but along a different direction third mode, and then fourth mode, fifth mode, wow, that's cool, looks like it's breathing, and sixth mode, and go back to the first mode. So in that way, we've done an unconstrained modal analysis. Please let me know in the comments section if you think that live simulation during the design process is something that would be useful to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.